Not going to take any more time because you are about to get a lot of information thrown at you. So be prepared for this ride. But we have Nakia Cook on the call. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with Nakia, again, I feel like it's the same thing as if you're not familiar with Duncan. She's everywhere. She's everybody's unconventional accountant. Um, and she's just a great person overall to really sit down with you and let you know how to make sure that you are staying on track for growth in your business, right? So with that being said, Nakia, feel free to take it away. So hello, everyone. Um, I appreciate you joining. Just as Duncan said, um, you're here. You're taking time out of your schedule because I still do believe time is money and money is time. So I appreciate you being here. I also am very down to earth. Um, I'm going to talk to you like you're right in front of me in my office and we're family. So just brace yourself because this is about to go down. Um, what I hope you'll learn and what you'll get out of here and what I'm going to speak on is to understand if your business really is a business, um, how your legal entity is taxed, um, some quick legal and financial issues, some resources, um, deductions and credits. So we're going to get um, into that. But who am I? Here's my little bio um, up there. But I own NC Accounting and Consulting Solutions, where I am your unconventional accountant because I like to um, speak and enhance the education around money and cash flow. I don't like um, people to be afraid of it, to be scared of accounting, especially in business, because you need it in order to run your business. And it's supposed to be used as a tool. So I'm here to help you use it as such. Um, I am on several boards in the community um, as the treasurer. And I also have a nonprofit where I assist um, young adults on understanding money, cash flows, fast flow, all that good stuff. So I love to talk about money. I love to talk about tax. Um, I love to talk about all things to help you grow um, personally and in your business. But before I get started, I want you to, re to remind you that this is just information and you should consult to your tax professional. If you are not mine, I see some of my clients on here and I thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you. Um, it is for informational purposes and it's not intended to be tax advice for you or your particular tax situation. Always consult someone because everyone's situation is different. However, it's information um, that I know to be true. <laughs> so your business. A business is only a business if you're making a profit. So that should be your goal in your business is to make a profit. So stop giving away things for free. And I'm going to tell you why. The IRS has roughly nine questions that they ask you specifically. And I always start with these first to make sure you're not running your business as a hobby. So you have to be running your business in a business-like manner. That means that you have complete and accurate books and records. Also, whether the effort that you put into the activity that you're doing within your business indicates that you wanna make it profitable. It's also if the livelihood of your business from your day-to-day -day activity is for that, you're producing income, having that profit for your livelihood, and that whether any circumstances within your business that may occur as a loss is beyond your control. So it's not the normal um, losses of your business. It could be a natural disaster or anything of that nature. Um, the next would be methods. So if you change the methods in your operations to improve, to get you profitable, if you have known advisors, so having that accountant, that um, attorney, your um, soundboard, your board of directors, if you have a nonprofit, um, any of those advisors to assist you with moving your day-to-day -day, um, operations within your um, business. Then past activities. So what that means is that whether you're successful in making a profit and similar activities that you've done in the past. So if you have been working, um, say, say if you're, you have been cooking, maybe for your family, for holidays, things of that nature, and someone starts to pay you for, say, your baked goods, your pies, or your, you know, your cookies, or things of that nature, then you start to move that into a business. So you knew that from those past activities, you were able to be profitable. You just didn't jump up one day and say, hey, I'm going to have a business, and this is what I'm going to do. And unfortunately, sometimes those turn into hobbies. Then, of course, 
whether that activity is going to make you a profit. If you notice what I have been saying a lot right now is profit. That is the key word here is that you want to make sure your business is making a profit. Then appreciation is that you want to make sure that you expect to make money in the future. So bottom line, through all those nine key points that the IRS tells you, and it is on irs.gov, is that you want to plan for profit in your business. Because why else are you in business? We all understand and we all hear those people say, you know, you want to help people, you want to serve. Yes, we can do all those things as well as making money because we all have student loans and we all have bills. I know I do at least. So how is your business set up? Now, your business structure affects how much you pay in taxes and your ability to raise money for your business, the paperwork you need to file for your business, and sometimes even on your personal tax return. So we're going to get into um, choosing that legal entity. So the most common ones will be that sole proprietorship, um, your corporations, your partnerships, general limited and liability, and then your um, LLCs, your limited liability companies. So what does that look like for a sole proprietorship? So that's generally just one owner. And this is in the legal stance of what that looks like. There's no distinction um, legally from you or your business. But on tax purposes, you still will um, complete as a DBA doing business as is a sole proprietor. So you'll most likely say a freelancer. If you're um, doing things on the side for individuals, um, if you write uh you know, articles or blogs for some people, those are um, freelancers. And if you receive a 1099, then that will filter through a Schedule C on your tax return. We'll get into that a little later. However, with a sole proprietor proprietorship, there is no type of legal separation from you or your business. So if someone were to sue you, they sue you and your business. So you want to make sure that um, business-wise, you are protecting yourself. Um, with a partnership, you must file an annual um, information return. And what that annual information return does is just to report your income, your deductions, your gains, your losses, et cetera, things of that nature for the operations. But it does not pay income tax. So instead, it passes through that profit or loss to the partners, which will be you and your business. So with that one, as you can see, it is a legal entity set up and it's separate from you. Your business is itself a whole. And then that profit or loss is passed through you um, and your partner within the business. Then we have those lovely corporations. Now, a corporation is its tax status. When you hear people say they are a C-Corp or an S-Corp, it still means that they are a limited liability company. It's just that their tax designation is a C-Corp or an S-Corp. So what is a C-Corp? A C-Corp, it files a corporate return and pays corporate income tax on its profits. So that means that the distributions are taxed twice. And I know that could be confusing. So that is um, when you're receiving shareholders um, income and then the distribution from that income um, on your on it's considered stock. So that's taxed twice. So people tend to shy away from C corps because of that taxation. So you may hear tons of people say they want to become an S corp. Now, there's rules to becoming an S-Corp, and I sigh and I make a face when people say they want to become an S-Corp because an S-Corp, you aren't taxed twice, so that's good, and you don't pay any corporate taxes. Instead, each shareholder, which will be yourself, pays personal income tax on your share of the profits, so you'll just pay taxes on the profits. However, you have to put yourself on payroll when you have an escort. And it's always good to keep in the back of your mind that if you want to have an escort, that you are making $45 to $70,000 taxable income. So let me roll that back. It's not good to just jump in. You can be, the great thing about having an LLC is that you can elect to be an escort or a C Corp anytime. So you want to make sure that you're at least bringing in taxable income of forty-five to seventy thousand 
before you go into that escort designation. Because if you're not doing that, then you will put more pressure on yourself to make payroll for you. And if you have employees, that as well. You'll put pressure on yourself to have to pay um, for those uh, tax filings um, because there are more forms to be filled out as well with a S-Corp. So there are some different um, state rules that you have to um, adhere to when becoming an S-Corp as well. But I know you may hear a lot of um, items people say, you know, they want to hurry up and jump into an S-Corp. It's okay. You can still pay yourself in owner's draws with an LLC. Getting to that LLC is the most common. It's the most popular and you can be a single member LLC. And they're taxed the way, the same way as sole proprietorships. However, you have that legal backing. And you also, um, with a um, LLC, go through a Schedule C. So it's still attached to your 1040 as a sole proprietorship. However, you have that legal backing. So you always wanna make sure that you're not um, DBAing it you do have that legal backing with your um, LLC. And of course, like I said, you have that flexibility to change the um, tax structure that you want to go into a C-Corp or an S-Corp when you choose to do so. And with the LLC, um, they do have, of course, some state and um, local uh, laws, some city laws too. I put a registered agent on there, and that's just someone who receives your documentation. If you've already been in business, you probably have gotten a lot of um, mail um, saying that they, someone can come in and take your legal documentation and open and have it for you and then filter it out to you. It's not um, necessary, but some states do have that requirement, and then you should have a operating agreement for your business um, as well. But LLCs are the most common and you can be taxed as a C-Corp or an S-Corp. Now, to, yes, you know, I can go, you just gotta stop me. <laughs> I'm like playing double Dutch here, trying to hop in here. Um, so we do have a, a question in the chat um, and it's probably good since you've already gone over LLC. Um, but Ms. Burns asks, can you do your taxes separate from uh, business personal taxes for an LLC? No. So your, um, once you file your, um, so two things. If you have a um, employer, so if you're working your business, but also have a W-2 um, employer, so you get a W-2 um, from you know, your, that entity, then you still have a 10 for If you don't and you're strictly in your business, you're self-employed, then you'll likely receive some 1099s or um, some owner's draws that you've done. That all is attached to your 1040. So your main tax form, that 1040, you will attach a Schedule C. So you'll likely just um, have your Schedule C and then that information, information will filter to your 1040. So that one isn't done separate. Now your S Corp and C Corp, that 1120-S, that is a K-1 schedule that is attached to your 1040 as well. So that's when you elect to become an, um, a corporation. And then you have your um, partnerships, those forms as well. So you will need to file both your um, Schedule C or an LLC that's going to be attached to your 1040. So it's not done separately, it's, it's done all together. All right, thanks, Nakia. And then your, your audio sounds a little um echoey now um but while we're fixing that uh there's another question in the chat and it's saying i've heard that before but can you explain having an llc and do taxes as a s corp um so meaning so when you have an llc and then you take your um file with the IRS first. Um, you can't have over 100 shareholders, so 100 people can't be in your business. You have to be a U.S. citizen, um, not a, a residential alien. Um, so there's rules behind it. Now, let me get that off, sorry. So when um, you have and the IRS approves you, you will get a form similar to what your EIN number looks like. It's just a letter, and it'll say the date, 
that you have to file because you have rules and dates to file for your uh, Schedule C as well. And it'll have that um, S Corp form too that you need to file. So that's something done totally uh, separate. So when you get that approval from the IRS, then that's when you will file on your business uh, fiscal year, on your business year of your business. So you have to file your K-1 separate than your um, first, rather. You always file that first, and then that form goes into your 10 form. Did that kind of help? You come off mute too. All right, Ms. Burns, if, if you want to come off mute um, and just make sure we answered your question. Um, I, we as in like, I just included myself in there, but <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> it, was, it was helpful. Um, it is a little confusing because I was trying to figure out how to keep things separate from my business versus my personal taxes. Um, and I guess there is no way to do that unless I'm a corporation. Oh, no. No, no, no. We'll do that. We'll. I'll go into that. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do that. We'll uh, get into that. So with the taxes is, so what I mean by um, being attached to it, it's just the forms that are attached to your 1040. But of course, your business bank account is something that um, you should have and filter through. And then your, I'm sorry, I have like three screens. That's how it works. So if I'm looking this way, it's because you, the people are on this screen. Um, my presentation is right here. And then what you see is on this screen. So um, when you're um, doing your uh, personal taxes, then that's fine. That's something separate. It's just the forms that are attached for your business. It's driving from your financial statements, your business bank account, and then the um, physical forms are attached to that 1040. So the IRS sees the entire picture. That's all. Because um, I know it can be confusing with keeping things um, separated. So the money is definitely separated. It's just the forms that are attached to it. But I'll get into that some details um, too. And then, um, so there's just one last question before we continue with the presentation. I will add in though, um, based on your prior um, slide, Nakia, when you were mentioning operating agreement, and even if you know there's some of the legal work that has to be done, you know, going from an LLC to then transferring to S corp or C corp. Um, for those of you that are located in Buffalo, the Western New York Law Center um, provides a lot of great uh, help. And a lot of times it's, I believe they're on a pay scale. So sometimes depending on how much you're making, you actually won't have to pay any money to get actual legal advice. So if anyone is interested in finding out, you know, information on how to get a hold of Western New York, bleh, Western New York Law Center, sorry, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat again. Um, it's a great source for business owners, whether you're starting out or you're already existing and you just need some, some legal advice. Okay, um, but to Mr. Jackson's question, he says, I'm an S Corp. What if I haven't been paying myself on payroll regularly, but just paying my employees on payroll? Will that hurt me uh, by me not paying myself? Um, yes, because you have to be on payroll. Um, but what I wanted to do uh, was show the business structure. So you have the sole proprietorship, partnership, LLC, C, and S Corp. Then the ownership, who owns it, how many people, and then the liability of it, like what you owe, if something were to happen, what that looks like, and then the um, taxes. So your sole proprietors, your personal tax only partnerships, you have your self-employment, um, except for those um, limited liability partnerships that are like attorneys and accountants, and then you have your personal tax. For LLCs, you have your self-employment, your personal or corporate tax as well. And then corporations is that corporate tax. And then the S Corp, it just filters through as your um, on your personal tax through that uh, K-1. We'll get into that um, a little later too when it comes to taxes and due dates. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of, and if you're already in business, um, I've seen in the chat, um, everyone has, you know, a business. Just so we all know that forming a business, some legal and financial issues that you may have, and Jihada just gave a um, great um, resource for you to go get, and especially if you can get it for uh, free. Um, but, you know, how signing contracts, employee issues, you have to have a lot of government compliance with some things. You want to make sure that you're planning uh, for taxes and have good bookkeeping set up. Um, you may have to go through some litigations. Um, you always have to safeguard your confidential information. Um, you all have intellectual property, you know, document, 
our retention, be aware and mindful of employee fraud, and then we're all here for growth and change. All your businesses um, should be in um, or going into, you know, some growth changes. And if you're just starting out, just to keep those things in mind when um, going in business period, you want to make sure you're growing your business, but everything that comes with it, we all know um, can be a headache, but it's also um, rewarding because you have the freedom of your um, time. Now, I want to get into the fun stuff that I think is fun rather than not to everyone else. Um, I don't think it's fun when I have to pay it, but I like to talk about it. Um, so your estimated taxes. Now, your estimated taxes are what you pay on income. It's not subject to withholdings. So that is your self-employment, your interest, your dividends, um, rent or alimony. But for the sake of your business, it's that self-employment, those 1099 forms that you get at the end or your cash that you get that you do not have federal taxes being taken out of. So when people say that they pay their estimated taxes um, quarterly, if you are in New York State, then yes, you have to pay not only your federal estimated taxes, but your state um, taxes as well on um, income. And um, you'll receive after this um, a guide for the tax dates, what's included in those tax dates, um, just so you can have a you know a handy dandy resource on the side of you. Um, to know what is due for your business. So usually your first um, tax payment is by um, April 15th. And you can pay them all in your first payment if you generally know how much you're gonna make and then the tax percentage on that. Or you can do it in four equal installments and just keep the number 15 in mind. So it's April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and January 15th. And this is just kind of what it looks like with that payment. So when you receive income from January 1 to March 31, then April 15th is when you need to be making your estimated tax payments to the IRS. And then also check the state. Because like I said, New York State, taxes for everything. April 1 to May 31, June 15th is when you'll be paying those estimated. Now remember, this is on income. June 1 to August 31, it's September 15th. And then we're going into September 1 to December 31st. You're gonna pay that from um, January 15th. Now, as mentioned, some people just pay it all or they, some people don't pay it throughout the quarterly, they pay it at the end um, during tax time. And if you haven't been paying your estimated tax payments, then IRS, that's when you have a balance due, that's most likely what it's from, is your um, taxes on your income. Now, for if you owe, like I mentioned, income in a year, so if you're self-employed, you don't have that paycheck. So this is just an overview of what that looks like. So if you expect to pay over $300 or more in New York State, New York City, Yonkers, or you owe $1,000, do you have to pay that for New York State? So you just have to be mindful that you have to pay both in New York State, so if other people are on... Um, your state taxes, as well as your federal taxes. And you can do all this online as well. New York, um, nys.gov and irs.gov. You can set up your business account and then you can put those that information in. So this is on income. Now, sales tax. So if you have any retail sales or tangible personal property and services, then sales tax may apply for you. Now, in New York State, if you are doing digital, then you don't have to pay sales tax on those digital content like, like ebooks. However, you do have to pay on music downloads. So there are certain stipulations that you have to pay that sales tax on. So you want to be mindful of that. But if you're um, if you have ebooks or anything of that nature, then no sales tax to it. But of course, you have to pay the tax to the income. Sorry, my light goes out of my office to the income um, that you have. Now, the next one would be, um, and it's in a resource guide too. So that information is in a resource guide that you have. And let me get up because this is going to aggravate me. That I can't, you can't see me. Okay. So, Nikki, you is that the, you said the IRS.gov and NYS.gov, is that it? Yes. Are, okay, those are in the New York State website. sales tax. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that will be in your resource guide too. So, where you can um, go in and um, set it up. But if 
I want to make this clear. If you do not have any tangible like t-shirts, anything like that right now, but you plan on doing it, do not file for a sales tax number. Because if you file for a sales tax number, you must go in each quarter and put in zero because you don't have any sales because you're not you know, uh, selling that item. However, if you forget to put in those zeros, the IRS automatically, well, New York State, excuse me, will charge you $50. So do not get that sales tax number unless you are selling tangible personal property and services. So don't get that yet um, until you're really going to start selling those, um, you know, whatever your business uh, uh, makes or do, but nothing on digital products uh, as of yet in New York State. However, if you are selling t-shirts, you know, clothing, um, items, then file for, to get your um, sales tax ID and then do that quarterly, but do not until you have those items to sell because you will get charged $50 if you don't go in and put in zeros to say that you don't have any sales. We have someone in the chat asks, what about a salon? Um, so for a salon, it depends on, so there is a non-exempt form that you can, um, if you buy in bulk, there's a form that you can fill out to where uh, you can bypass some of the sales tax. So you can email me, um, you can email me about that too after and I can uh, send that to you. But if you're selling the, say shampoos, conditioners to your clients, then yes, you have to collect sales tax on that. But you as a purchaser from bulk, then it may be an instance where you don't have to. We have two more questions. Um, so mm -hmm. one of them says, can someone cancel their New York State sales tax account? And then the other question is, what about food? Um, so there are certain foods. So if you go to New York State um, site, they do have the list of foods as well as gasoline that are taxed and some that aren't. Like popcorn isn't. Um, and then go back to food with restaurants or cooking from your home and things like that. You want to make sure that you also go to that New York State site and um, register so you don't get dinged. Um, um. <clears throat> Or I know the light was going to do it again, so you don't get dinged. Um, but there are certain foods that are and aren't taxable. All right. To list them. So Kayla, you would want to check with Indiana since you're not in New York State, um, just to make sure you know some things are probably different in Indiana. Um, but Nakia regarding the New York state canceling the New York state sales tax and then Robert, I'll call on you. Cause I see you have your hand on. All right, cool. Look, Nikia, I got a question. Hold on one second, Robert. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so the question about, can someone cancel their New York state sales tax account? Yes, you can. Okay. All right. So there's that. Okay. Robert, go ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, cool. So having a hybrid uh, electric car, gas car, can I write that off? Um, are you going to use it for your business purposes? Yeah, yes. of course. Like, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have to put that in there. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, I got to drive around, <laughs> see clients, right? I mean, you know, yes. so, okay, all right, cool. All right. You, I just put a logo, sure. you can put a logo and a sticker in there. You can make it fully tax deductible. We'll talk about that later. Oh, word. Okay. Yes. All right. That's what's up. <laughs> Um, and then there's one other question in the chat before we continue. It says, first time filing self-employed taxes. Is this something you think is easy to navigate on something like TurboTax or should I get professional help? Of course, as a professional, I'm going to say call me. Um, but <laughs> don't necessarily um, starting off, I would say it's very important so you understand it yourself is to go through and um, navigate the sites. So they do have um, steps for you to go through. So just to make sure you read it and you understand yourself before you give that information over to a professional, because you want to know what's going on in your business um, before you give that um, responsibility to someone else. So starting off, I would say, yes, go read 
um, the IRS.gov uh, where it says put in your estimated tax payments, you set up an account. It does give you step by step, but then after that, you can come see me. Same thing with sales tax. Sales tax is a little is a little um, different, but you set up and make your account too, and it does give you um, step by step instructions on how to go through it um, and set it up. But you would just want to be mindful that when or if, because I don't know your situation, if you're doing sales in different locations outside of New York State, if you do have a high amount of volume in another state, you do have to pay those states sales tax. So you want to be mindful of that too um, when uh, having or starting a business by selling things online. And it's called, to go back to um, the sales tax, just in case if you were to go look it up, it's called surrender your sales tax certificate. Okay, thank you. Um, just to, I'm going to add my two cents in on that question because it kind of leads into um, some other stuff we've talked on previous uh, workshops about. Uh, I'm of the school of thought that if this is not your zone of genius, um, that it's helpful to reach out to someone who does this um, professionally that you know knows what they're doing. Um, because what you end up finding out is that you end up putting a lot of time into understanding um, an area, right? That maybe is not your zone of genius. And that time could be better spent on your actual zone of genius. So you're actually making money and then just making sure that you're outsourcing some of these things. And I see that a lot with um, design, be it web design, branding, things like that, um, social media, you know, the, it, if it's done well, it looks easy to do. Uh, however, there's a lot of time, a lot of education, a lot of experience that goes into it to make it look like it's easy to do. Um, and so, you know, just be mindful of some of these things, especially when you're talking about taxes and legal documents, right? Someone has, has had an entire educational background, an entire career dealing with these things which is why it takes them a lot less time to do. So, you know, just really evaluate what's what's worth it for your business, for you to either be, you know, working on the stuff that you're really good at and outsourcing, or if it's something that you can take on. So just be mindful of that. And that, that goes for everyone on the call. Um, Corinne did ask, um, is there a reliable list for deductible items? I'm going to give that to you in just a moment. <laughs> um, yes, Perfect. I have that for you. Awesome. Speaking of which, deductions, credits, due dates, and more. So I do want to put emphasis, though, on um, credits. Because credits are dollar-for-dollar dollar reductions of the income tax you owe. So what that means is that um, I gave an example here. So if you have a $10,000 tax deduction or a $10,000 tax credit, um, and if your adjusted gross income is um, $100,000, your tax deduction is $10,000, then that lowers your $90,000, your taxable income to $90,000. So look at that $90,000 as what deductions do is reduce your income. So if you're going to get any loans, if you're trying to purchase a home or do anything of that nature, deductions lower your income. So it isn't going to look like you're making any money. Now, with that same example, with the taxable income of being $90,000 and say the tax rate is 25%, your calculated tax is 22,500. You don't have any tax credit, so that's zero. So your tax bill will be 22,500. Now, if you're looking on the credit side, you have a, see, credits, the light just came up when I said credit, my God, okay. So if you have your AGI as $100,000, then it went down. Your no tax deductions, because remember that tax deduction is going, going to lower your income. Then your taxable income is still $100,000. Let's assume you have that 25% tax rate. So your calculated tax is $25,000. Your tax credit is $10,000, so now your tax bill is $15,000. So I wanted to use that example to put it in the mindset of, although I'm going to go through a ton of deductions and things that you can't write off, just remember that deductions lower your income while a credit will lower your tax bill. And a credit can also give you a refund if, um, if you're eligible for some. So when looking at those um, credits for your business, you have the Family Medical Leave um, Care Act. So if you have employees, 
Um, you're paying um, at least 50% of their earnings. You can get that. Um, another one would be the qualified plug-in electric and electrical vehicle credit. So that's one. So if you use that um, vehicle um, on or after 2010, then even if it's a scooter or electric car, and that credit is worth $25 to $7,500. So remember that credit is that dollar for dollar to lower your tax liability. Um, disabled access credit. So if you have a um, location where you're going in and making it accessible for wheelchair, wheelchair enabled or um, disabled individuals, then you can get a credit for that as well. Um, empowerment zone and renewal community employment credit. So if you hire someone, who lives and works in a low income area you may qualify for this credit as well. So that's a good credit for up to $3,000 for each full or part-time employee you have that lives in one of those areas. And that's up to 20% of the first $15,000 in wages that you give to your um, employee. So that's a good one. Um, that alternative motor vehicle credit. So if you're um, business bought or used a vehicle and it runs on alternative fuel such as hydrogen fuel cells. Um, this one doesn't apply to those electric ones, but you can also get up to $7,500 on this. And then the work opportunity tax credit, um, that's one for hiring employees um, in certain targeted groups. So if you hire an incarcerated individual or um, any um, work opportunity area to where um, it facilitates or doesn't have access to certain things, you can get this credit as well. So these are just some um, high level credits that, are, that you can get off, just off the bat for your um, business um, as the credit. Now, if going back, so for these credits, it would have to be primarily for your business. And of course, it will have to be um, I'm going back to that one, a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle. But if your business requires you to have a vehicle, say if you doing, you're doing drop-off pickups or you're in a medical care um, doing those, then you can write off that as well. As long as the sole purpose is for business. So that's how the IRS differentiates that. It can't be used for business or personal. If it is, you can only do a percentage of that vehicle. But if you purchase the vehicle under your business name, it's used for business, you can write that off um, all together. Any questions on that? Um, so Ms. Burns, I see you have a question in here about what if you purchase a vehicle? I know Nakia just went through that, but are we, are we clear on that? Or maybe is there something that we missed? You feel free to take yourself off mute. Nope, I'm good. Right after I had said it, she had. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. And then, okay. I'm just making sure. All right. We're good. Um, again, just my two cents. I like to sprinkle this in throughout the presentation. Like Nakia said, just make sure, um, make sure you're thinking long term when you're looking at deductions and credits. Obviously, no one ever wants to pay uh, when tax season rolls around, right? Uh, but again, if you at some point are thinking in expanding your business, you're thinking about getting financing, whether that be through Pathstone or any other financial institution, uh, remember, it just looks better if it shows that your business is making money versus losing, because that's really what it looks like when you're taking all these deductions. These are all these expenses that your business is having versus the profit that you're making. So just keep that in mind when you're moving along in the business world uh, and always think long-term because the idea is that we wanna make sure that your businesses are here to stay. All right, Nakia, continue. So um, deductions. So as mentioned, deductions are expenses that you can deduct from your taxable income. Now I'm gonna go through um, a few of them and some of them that you may not thought you could write off, but you can. And I don't want you to be afraid of deductions it's all about your planning in your business. So you may be fine with, um, you know, right now you have a lot of things going on. You're looking for that um, refund or you want to deduct as much as you can um, to assist you with any, whatever your financial plan is, is for you. That's why it's not necessarily um, 
sway to go to one or the other, but I want you to be mindful that credits do that. So if you are looking for, as you had to say, you know, a loan for your business expansion and things like that, you want to look ahead and see, you know what, let me see what I can purchase to get that credit. Or this is something I can deduct to lower my um, income, but this is something that I can get that credit for to um, decrease my taxable income. So it all depends on what you want to do. So you want to make sure that you're um, speaking with an accountant to assist you in the direction in which you want your business to go to, because that could be very helpful in understanding all these um, deductions that I am going to uh, go through. So of course, Sorry, Nikia. yes, me again. Um, because you said, you know, someone should have an account. Are you taking on new clients? Someone did ask that in the chat. Oh, yes, I am. I'm taking okay. new clients. All right. So everybody, make sure you get her information. Okay. Um, so a lot of what um, I do is for your, if you have a business, which you do, you can write accounting fees off. So my bookkeeping service, um, my the well, the QuickBooks is included in my fees, um, but everything that you work with me on, you can write that off. Um, so accounting fees, legal fees, those are things that you can write off. Of course, you know about your um, advertising, but your bank fees. A lot of people don't know that when you get bank fees on your business bank account, you can write that off. Um, any um, car expenses that you had, if it's for your business, you can write that off. Collection expenses. I want you to be mindful that this is separate from your personal business because your, your personal um, situation, because a lot of things on here, you can write off for your business, but you cannot write off personally. So you can write off credit card, um, convenience fees, any cleaning or janitorial services that you have, commissions to outside parties, um, consulting fees, charitable deductions, um, charity, charity or travel to perform charitable services. Um, we also have depreciation, any discounts that you give to customers. If you're eating out while you're traveling, you still have a couple weeks to um, fully deduct that 100%. If it's from a restaurant because of what happened during COVID, the IRS is now allowing you to deduct um, the restaurant uh, eating 100%. Um, employee wages, employee benefits, any entertainment to customers and clients. Um, let's see, exhibits, um, freelancing, furnitures, any customer gifts under um, $25, newspaper, magazines, payroll. Um, it's a lot of things that you can deduct for your business. And a lot of people um, work in this capacity. They make purchases to make sure that the purchases are working for them. So postage, any publicity that you had out there, um, outside services, um, guard dogs, if you have those, uh, your home office, but keep in mind that your home office must be exclusive to your office. It can't be your dining room table um, and you cannot have a standalone uh, workspace. What I mean is that you can't have a um, office space and then also collect the home office uh, deduction as well. Um, license fees, materials, management fees. I know I try to give you all of what I can give you so that you know. Your rent, um, safe deposit boxes, software and online services, your startup expenses, subcontracting, um, tips, waste removal, your website design is um, deductible as well, workers' compensation. So there's a lot that you can deduct within your business, your exterior equipment for playing background music at work. I know you probably didn't know that one, but anything that you have up there, you can deduct. It's just finding the right person to assist you with these. And it's not, I want to make this clear though, it's not during tax time. We'll get into what you need to have for tax time, but these are things that you should be aware of throughout the year. So then you take note to that because your tax professional may know of what may know what they can write off. So they'll look, like I do that for my clients. Like I'll look and say, okay, I see this on your P&L. So I know that can be um, written off. Or I do the bookkeeping for some. So I know what's already on their chart of accounts so what they're spending on. So I know how to expense that appropriately. So you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence for your business because an accountant doesn't know. If they're not on your balance sheet, which what tells the story of your business, then they don't know uh, what you're spending money on. Well, I cut on the light. Is there any questions before I go to the next thing? 
There was one question. Um, it says, are these expenses written off at 100%? Um, not all of them, no, but the majority of them, yes. Okay. And then it says, can you take a percentage off your phone if you use it mostly for business, but also, question mark? Yes, you can. You can do that for, um, so a little hack. If you were to go to um, your service provider and switch your account to your business account, your business account, so you can write that off 100%. Um. Just make sure uh, it's your line. If you have multiple lines, it's kind of hard to do that. But personally, I have multiple lines on mine, on um, my children and mine. So I just write off mine um, because it's a business account. I changed it through T-Mobile. So whatever your service pro provider is, you can do the same thing. Um, change that to business account to make that 100%. Okay, gotcha. Um, and no, we can, we can move forward. Okay. So in order for you to even think about getting all these deductions or credits, you have to have some type of organization in your business. So I'm QuickBooks certified. I don't even think I said what I do and what I am, but I'm here. We in it now. I'm already going through it. So I'm a QuickBooks um, pro. Um, so I am going to advocate for QuickBooks. However, there are some other systems that can help you out there, which to keep your items organized and in place and give you financial statements that's easy for tracking. So during tax time, you would literally just print off your P&L, your profit and loss statement, and give that to your tax advisor. They do not need your uh, receipts or anything of that nature. That's just for you to keep track of in the event of an audit. Um, however, they just need the high level information. So as mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, making sure that you have accurate um, books and records, this is where you will start. So it's having your business um, bank account, which is your EIN, which is attached to your EIN number that you can get for free um, at irs.gov. It's your business name that's not already taken by someone else. So you want to check that. Um, you could do that at the DBA um, source if you're not already in business. Um, at the city website or your city website and then get that information. So that's free and then go in, not to DBA though, that's not free, I think it's $35 now. However, FreshBooks, it's something that you can use. So that streamlines time tracking and invoices. Um, Sage 50 Cloud, now that has, that's more intricate. It has like 50 level, 50 enterprise levels to it, but it handles taxes, inventory, budgeting, cash flow expenses, invoicing, financial data, I mean, a lot of other uh, information. Um, NetSuite is just the same thing as Zoho. It's more of an HR type payroll processing. Um, Zoho is similar to the uh, FreshBooks and it supports like collaboration. And if it's more like a connector, um, that's what NetSuite or maybe Zoho does. And then if you heard of Gusto, that's a good accounting software for your HR invoices. Um, and that's built for small businesses as well, as well for payroll. Um, free agent, that is a powerful tool as well. Um, it's online and it's used to help freelancers and small business owners to just to keep their accounts, accountings um, together and their finances. And then zero. That's um, like a, a larger hub um, for your financial data that can be used um, everywhere. So having a good tracking system for your numbers is a great way to start. And there are um, QuickBooks starts at like $10 a month, self-employed, a connect your business bank account. So then you can see, and it also tells you what your estimated payments will be. Um, for the quarter because it's driving off of the income that you have coming in. So it's just great to have these things in order. Although I know we live in a time where people say, you know, you can't start off with your Excel sheets and things of that nature, which is great. And it's good as a starting point for your um, business, but you wanna move to something more um, solid to where you can see your financial statements and reports, because you wanna be able to see how your business is um, moving, how your cash flow is doing within your business. What are your inputs and outputs of your business? Is there any questions on this section? Um, so there's, uh, well, technically one question, uh, basically any free, uh, free systems, you know, free or anything free tracking systems for new companies? 
Um, no, everyone's out there um, <laughs> to, to get a dollar. So the lowest one I have to say will be that QuickBooks one. Um, I may have a link still for the one for $7 a month because okay. uh, accountants get discounts on these. So they just filter that out to um, the, the people. Um, so I may have a link for that one, but that's why people shy away from it. Um, because of the cost of some of these, but I would have to say that starting in one of these will be more beneficial than starting later, like starting now and starting later. Um, and you can write that software off too. Um, so it's great to just start with something, um, but there aren't really any free um, that you can put in uh, for your business, unfortunately. Um, but QuickBooks, also, you can also use for your personal finances too. And you can track what you spend on entertainment, everything of that nature, because I use it that way, too. Awesome. And then Corinne put in the chat. Um, so she's on QuickBooks now. There's a sale for three months uh, starting at $15 a month. So that's $15 for the first three months. Is that uh, your first $15 each month for the first three months? Right, Corinne? Yes. OK, okay. <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah, um, I know some some people use <laughs> excuse me. Um, some people use Excel or some form of Excel to try and keep track of things. And I have heard accountants say that uh, when you really need the information, right, for tax season and things like that, you need to send it over to someone to like, uh, like Nakia. Um, the free versions don't give you the information that you actually need and so you end up wasting again back to the wasting time right is it more beneficial for you to be um paying i mean less than a cell phone bill if we're being honest about it um you know for a system like this that's just going to make your life easier and really help you track your numbers in business to figure out what your goals are um so again just something to think about it's not to say that everybody has it like that uh, but there's definitely some things that you want to, you want to consider making an investment on in your business. Um, all right, Nakia. So with the, um, tracking as well, like with, um, QuickBooks or FreshBooks, any one of these that you use, um, as mentioned, like, of course you can use your Excel sheets, but what a lot of the professionals don't let, don't tell you is that when you just give them like Excel sheets or receipts or anything like that, they charge you more. They charge you by their hourly rate. So they have to input all this information, organize it, um, prep, then um, filter it out and put it in categories. So when you give like bank statements or when you give um, highlighted things or your electronic um, versions of the information that you have, they essentially charge you more for that because they have to go in and organize things versus it being organized already through bookkeeping throughout the year. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, now, what to have for tax time? So you wanna make sure that you have all your income items. So when creating your um, checklist for your business, you wanna have all the income that you have coming in from day to day, any investments, any secondary income, any gross receipts from sales or um, services, your business checking or savings accounts, um, interest accounts, any sales records, of um, accrual based or cash based, your gross receipts from sales. So you wanna make sure that you have all your 1099, 1099. You wanna make sure that you have all your income coming in. Um, other income could be rental income. If you have rentals, um, any credits from federal, um, gasoline, state uh, credit, those are some additional ones. Um, your cost of goods. So now some categories may not apply like in each tax season. So you should include what you did um, last tax season for your checklist. But if you purchase, produced, or sell merchandise in your business or trade, then you'll need to take inventory. So you need that end of the year and that beginning of year inventory dollar amount totals. So you need that for your cost of goods sold, your inventory purchases, um, your any items that you remove for personal purposes, your materials, your supplies. So you wanna make sure you have that within your cost of goods sold if you are in merchandising. Then your, all your expenses. 
Make sure you're keeping track of everything you spent money on in your business and keep those receipts. Now, that's one thing, you know, receipts fade. So in QuickBooks, you can upload them to the um, transaction. But if you don't have that, then try to take a picture, scan it and keep it into the cloud. So then you have that um, record for or in the event that you do have a um, audit. And then any advance payment tax notices, how we got those stimulus um, payments and things of that nature from the IRS. Now, if you are in business and you have employees um, or even for yourself, you do have some tasks that you need to complete as well. So you wanna make sure that you're filing forms 1099-NEC or um, form 1096, that's the summary of what you pay to independent contractors, um, file form W-2 if you have employees, or W-3, and that's that transmittal of wage and statement form to the Social Security Administration, um, and then your federal and state payroll returns, your form 940s and 941 ones, and usually your payroll processing company will do that for you, the, the later part, the form 940 and 941. So you wanna be mindful of tax forms that you need to file. And then, to sum it all up, as mentioned before, the best thing that you can do is have financial statements for your business. Um, there are templates out there for you as well, but it's easier to have them in a um, system such as QuickBooks to have you be organized and um, just connected in your um, business. So I went through all those slides and then I have my website up there, but I'll put my information in the chat as well. You can follow me on um, LinkedIn, but I am open here. I think we have a couple more minutes for some, any questions? Yeah, we definitely do. So, all right. Would you recommend Live Plan? Um, is that Live Plan is more so for your, um, um, what is it called? Your business plan. Um, that's good for organization and starting uh, with live plan. So yeah, I would recommend live plan. Awesome. And then, well, before I go ahead and read the next question, thank you, <laughs> Nikki. I got wrapped up. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so thank you for an amazing presentation. Um, taxes, any anything money related is always a lot to take in. Um, so thank you for this. Uh, we do, as I mentioned earlier on, we will send out the slides for, uh, you know, from today's presentation, along with a really great resource guide that Nakia put together. Um, and it has some of those important dates for you to, well, technically, you don't have to remember now because they are, you know, put aside for you. Um, but just to be mindful of so that you're not, you uh, so that you're not paying these penalties because you forgot to file a specific, you know, date. Um, another thing I want to mention before we get to some additional questions, and guys, feel free to add in any additional questions you have in the chat. I'll feel free to read your, not feel free, but I will read them off. Or if you want to come off mute and ask them yourself, you are also welcome to do so. Um, we will have another course happening in about two weeks. That'll be a bit of a longer extension. It's going to be three to four weeks, and we may have Nakia back with some extra goodies that may and may or may not involve some QuickBook uh, signups. So, you know, keep that in mind. We are also going to be um, having some uh, sales coaching happening. So I know holidays are coming up and, you know, Again, people want to make sure that they're selling their products because of holiday season, but always keep in mind long term, right? So even if you are increasing your sales during the holidays, uh, we want to make sure that you are potentially increasing your sales for the rest of the, the new year to come. So that's something that we are going to have in this uh, the new workshop that I'm talking about. All of this stuff will be sent out to you by Friday. So it'll be the link to register, the resource guide, um, today's slides. Um, so that's the last of that. I will get to today's questions. All right, so we already went through live plan. Um, Siobhan asks, should you start QuickBooks at the beginning of the year instead of say tomorrow? I'll start tomorrow, I'll start now. Um, you can upload, so as soon as you connect your bank account, it def by default, it goes back um, 90 days. 
but you um, can also um, upload it for three years. So you can have your data in there. It depends on you doing a desktop or the online version, but your numbers will be in there. So you can start anytime with QuickBooks. Okay, awesome. And then while we're waiting for any additional questions, has anyone on the call, I know Corinne, you're currently using QuickBooks. Anyone else using QuickBooks or maybe any other platforms that you're currently using? Feel free to come off mute or if you wanna put it in the chat, just so we know kind of what people are leaning towards here. Uh, my name is Juliet, hi. Um, I hi. do use QuickBooks. Uh, I jump my, uh, I have a, I had a PC and I was using an old version of QuickBooks 2014 and my computer crashed. So unfortunately um, I lost all of that data and I'm wondering um, if there's any way like I can, if I take my computer somewhere and they can sort of salvage the, um, how do I transfer that over from the PC 2014 to an online version? Is that possible or no? Um, it is, however, um, that one is a little more, um, I'm not going to say difficult, but it, it, it has more <laughs> intricate pieces into that one because it's I bet. <laughs> the desktop version and the online version is different and they're shying away from the desktop. So it's difficult to, um, transfer those files. Um, so it'd be a mm -hmm. more of manual entry. Yeah, I'm I, I honestly I'm really just really more concerned about salvaging the just a paper version, you know, just getting that off my PC that crashed. So even if I can't convert it, um, at least getting it, you know, salvaging it. So okay. I have to find a, comu a, a computer person. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So that's, and I'm sorry to hear that happen, Julia. Right. Um, but so to that, we have a great follow-up question, which is, do you have a preference um, in terms of QuickBook being online or a desktop version? Um, online is much better. Online, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, only because, like I said, they're getting away with the desktop version and um trying not to support it's difficult to get like on that line for support with them although it's still available and they're still selling it but the online version just gives you more flexibility okay all right good to know um anyone else any questions and then i i while i'm waiting for that uh nikki i see you put a link in the chat yeah, that's the um <laughs> up to 30 percent off for six months on quickbooks there you go. Depends on which one you want to um, use. You said up to 30% off, was it? Yes. Okay. I hope everyone is copying that link right there. I'm going to copy it too, because you never know. And just open it up on a separate screen. All right. Uh, let me see. We have a question. It says, can you elaborate on placing a logo on your vehicle for a tax deduction? Um, that could be a, um, you know, some people have their vehicles like decked out, um, but you can put a sticker on the side that just has your um, logo on your vehicle, just so that it's known that that's, that can technically go to, towards advertising because you're advertising your vehicle. Um, you advertise your business, excuse me, on your vehicle. So you can use, um, that as a write-off to make sure that um, it's where people can see it, um, obviously. But if you're, um, if you purchase the vehicle underneath your business name or even transfer, if your business can buy out your vehicle, then that's where it's usually like more 100% um, write-off. Okay. You can take a, a double, I guess, deduction on advertising and on the vehicle with that one, with having a decal or something on it. Gotcha. And then Courtney, if you want to come off mute and tell us what your business is. You put me on the spot. I Hi did. Guys. Hi, Courtney. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Nakia. I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I need to hire you. But um, okay, so you wanted to know what my business is. So I own L. James on Hurdle. I'm in the store now doing inventory, guys. 
Um, but I'm open Wednesday through Saturday. I have home decor. I have floral sage bundles. I have artisan incense. I have pillows and candles and I do custom decor. So come and do some holiday shopping with me if you need some really special gifts. And um, I really appreciate these seminars, you guys. So thank you for today. It was great. Lots of good information. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Courtney. <laughs> Definitely uh, will add that to places I need to visit. Um, my poor apartment, it hasn't seen a new thing in a while. So the intensifier. <laughs> buy something. Yes. You grabbed some from me this weekend, right? Yep. The Robert? intensifier, the soap is fire. The soap is good too. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Well, we all need to go and visit Courtney's um, shop. So you said it was on Elmwood, right? No, Hurdle, 1856 Hurdle, okay. Hurdle Avenue. Okay. I'm right at Hurdle and Parker. Um, a lot of people from back in the day know Checkersburg. I'm right next door. Um, or Mink Hair Salon. There's a new Lash Bar down the street and where the old Daily Planet is. Hurdle. Yes, I have an online store. It's ljamesdecor.com. I'll put it in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Anyone else, any questions before we depart today's session? Going once. Hope it was helpful. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for offering this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for coming, you guys. We, we really do appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to come and listen to this information. Um, we really can't stress enough, um, you know, just be, so here's the thing, right? Sometimes because things are free, people don't take advantage of them because I don't know, there's something, some mental thing happens that people just feel like it's not as valuable as something that you're paying, you know, a large sum of money for. But I mean, we're here to try and better your businesses, right? And so you can very much go out and spend money. Obviously, if you uh, take on Nakia services, she will be charging you because she is not working for free. Um, but we are here to provide the information so that you just make better decisions in your business. Um, and any questions are, you know, are welcomed, right? We just want to make sure that we're providing as much um, assistance as we possibly can. Because like I said, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that your businesses are here today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, right? That you're you're passing on these, these businesses, whether it's with your family or your neighbors or, you know, the whole building generational wealth situation. So thank you again. And let me just make sure I didn't miss any questions in the chat. Um, all right, Courtney, it looks like somebody wants to add your website to a Black Friday list. So see, you get some networking that happens here <laughs> on these calls too. Um, so I thanks. love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, everybody. And you get five minutes back of your day. So we will see you soon and check out that follow up email in the next two days. Don't forget to register for the next uh, the next workshop. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great night. Thank you, Nakia. You're welcome. Thank you.